Welcome back to the Brain Warriors Way. I have a very special guest today, one that most of you will already know. He doesn't need much of an introduction. He's a dear friend of ours, but I'm going to do him justice anyways. I'm going to read his bio. We've got Dave Asprey today. So Dave Asprey is the founder and chairman of Bulletproof. He's a three-time New York Times bestselling science author, host of the Webby award-winning podcast, Bulletproof Radio, and has been featured on the Today Show, CNN, the New York Times, Dr. Oz, and more. Over the last two decades, Dave, the father of biohacking, has worked with world-renowned doctors, researchers, scientists, and global mavericks to uncover the latest, most innovative methods, techniques, and products for enhancing mental and physical performance. Dave has personally spent nearly $2 million taking control of his own biology, pushing the bounds of human possibility, all in the name of science and evolution. The creator of Bulletproof Diet and innovator of Bulletproof Coffee, Collagen Protein, Supplements, and more. More advances in commercial wellness products. Dave's mission is to empower the entire globe with information and knowledge that unlocks superhuman potential in everyone at any age. The proof of these sleep, energy, expanded capacity for all. Be a partner, parent, provider, and overall human human being in every aspect of life. Be proof, be bulletproof. Wow. Welcome, Dave. So nice to see you again. Uh, thank you. And thanks for that kind introduction. I'm, I'm feeling full of myself now. Well, it's, um, you know, it's funny. I'm reading this introduction and I know all of these things about you, but honestly, I know you as a person and that's, it's been so much fun to know you all of these years. And I always say this whenever I see you, but I love bulletproof coffee. Um, it's just, it's an amazing amazing coffee, but you've also got, you know, you, you built this amazing company and you've done so much with your life and these books and you've rebuilt your health and you've done all these really cool things. So I'm super excited to have you back. Our audience just loves you every time you're here with all the tips and, and knowledge that you bring. So welcome. Well, it, it's a pleasure to, to be friends. And I still say to this day, if I had not done a spec scan when Dr. Amon's very first book uh, came out, uh, I wouldn't be here today. I mean, he showed me how a hardware problem, not just a moral failing. And it was, it was a really big light switch for me. So I'm eternally grateful for just the incredible lifting, just, just the pushing against the system that it takes to introduce a new idea. Like maybe you should look at your brain to fix it. Like who would have thought? <laughs> so I'm always happy to be here. I love that. And I couldn't agree with you more. It's so interesting when you realize that it's medical and not moral. So I love that you said that. Um, so I want to talk to you a little bit before we jump in. You've got a new book that I'm excited to, to talk to our audience about. Um, but I want to hear a little bit about how you've been during COVID. What have you been doing um, since you are the father of biohacking and really taking control of your health? What has COVID, what challenges have you seen with COVID and what have you been doing to sort of get by and not just get by, but thrive? Well, like everyone, my kids were home more than planned. And mm -hmm. so I said, all right how do we make it a little bit more playful? And, and I said, all right, you know, you can do what you want. What do you want to learn? And, you know, my daughter, I want to do more art and do more art. And my son, I want to learn programming. I'm like, you're 11. Okay. Get some videos. And he's written three video games now uh, in different languages. Um, but just letting them do what they love. And wow. the biggest thing I was been teaching them to feel safe and then using the platforms where I'm blessed to have lots of followers just to reinforce this idea that, that you're safe and it's turning off the amygdala and just being calm. And, and there's a, an advanced spiritual state that I, I teach at my, my neuroscience brain upgrade thing, very different than a spec scan. I tell everyone I know, get a spec scan first, just to be really clear, this is a neurofeedback, like polishing of the brain. And what I've, uh, what I've done there is, is there are these spiritual states that we can achieve. And one of them is empathy for others. Like you can feel other people's pain. Okay, this is good, but it also is bad. If everyone else around you is completely full of fear and freaking out, then you're likely to do that. And then there's another level, which is compassion. We can like, oh, wow, these people are suffering. I don't have to take it in, but they are. And then the final one is equanimity, which is where I can be completely grounded, safe, and myself and in the states that are of, of service to others the best. And I can do that no matter what's happening around me, whether there's, there's a hurricane, an earthquake, 
riots, fires, plagues, you name it, but you're still you and you, do, you just don't have to take it in and it doesn't cost you. You're not pushing against it because you're there. So I've been working on that state and working on helping uh, the people who follow me understand that that's possible and desirable and that you don't have to watch the news every day. And when you do that magically, maybe those voices in your head will shut up or at least get a little bit nicer. Oh, I could not agree with you more. It's amazing how when I don't turn the news on, you know, I go outside my backyard with a cup of green tea and I watch the hummingbirds, like everything feels great in the world, actually. It's hard to focus on all the negativity. The minute I turn the news on, I'm screaming at the TV. So you have more yeah. control than you do, right? One of the things that's been really remarkable is there's been a huge shift in Google uh, over the last year. They stopped carrying health content, even in the search results. And I used to use Google News. And what I do now is I have an app called News 360 and you tell it what you care about and you thumbs up or thumbs down every article they show you and it learns what you like. So when I tune into the news there, I get a list of all the latest findings about our brains and mitochondria and human performance and kindness. And it filters out all the garbage. I'm like, I don't care about all the garbage. And then once a day, I log into Google News just to remind myself, like, like just to analyze what's actually being fed to us versus what we want. And they're not even the same universe. And interesting? It is. And really interesting. On my Instagram page, I'm dave.asprey. Yesterday, I posted the, the words of it, be very afraid. That was it. That was the whole picture was be very afraid. And then I put the words, be very afraid at the top of my little description. And then in parentheses, I put, we're going to test and see if the algorithm pushes this to the top of your feed. And hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people are like, Dave, I never see your stuff in my feed. And this was 11 hours ago and it's at the top of my feed. So the algorithms there, and this isn't proof, but it's pretty obvious. The algorithms there are promoting fear and they're promoting an amygdala response because it makes more money. I don't think there's an evil guy there saying, I decided to do this. It's just what happens when you say we want attention because fear gets more attention than love. It's, it's how we're wired because you might die right now from a tiger and you can love later. And, and it's just not okay. So we got to stop that. Right. So you know this. Um, we are hardwired as human beings to pay attention to what is frightening, what is yeah. because we have to get away from it. Just hardwired that way. Um, you know, what makes us happy, we can deal with later. In fact, I have a funny story just really fast with my husband. He was creating this game, this brain game, to teach people to pay attention to what um, is good, to what is yeah. happening, to settle down the amygdala, if you will. But as somebody who grew up in chaos and trauma and had a lot of childhood trauma, I'm playing this game. He's like, look, I want to help you focus on the things that are you know, happy. So what you do is you focus on the happy faces and you ignore the scary faces and the sad faces. And I'm like, too, this game and I like throw it at him. I'm like, this is the dumbest game. He goes, why? I go, because I don't care about the happy faces. When you've grown up like I do, you're paying attention to the threat. But in the minute I said it, I'm like, that's why the news does what they do. It, it's exactly why. And it's funny. I did the test there at Amen Clinics, and I think I see angry faces like yeah. three times faster than I see smiley faces. Uh, and it's where it ended. I had birth trauma. I was bullied and, and things like that. And you're just, it happens, but you can change your filters. And what I have learned through the course of my work writing about mitochondria in the brain is that we, f we start our filtering of reality inside our cells throughout our body. And then they make a little decision about what do they pass on? And then they collaborate and they make a decision about what passes on until it reaches your prefrontal cortex. And then there's these seven layers that strip out things and you only get to see what's left. And if that is set to look for fear, it's going to find fear. And through the process of video games, through training, through meditation, through heart rate variability, all these different kinds of feedback, neurofeedback, breathing, almost every spiritual practice out there that's, that aims to do that, you can change your filters. So all of a sudden you see the good stuff instead of seeing the bad stuff. I, I want to play this game. I'll probably suck at it too. <laughs> I know. I love that. So um, we're going to dig into your book in the next episode, but show us your book now. All I right. Want to Let's see. This might be my best book ever uh, in terms of readability and just content and usability. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. It's called Fast This Way. Fast This Way. And it's all about what you need to know about fasting, right? Well, there's, there's lots of books. Okay. I'll write a book on fasting for you right now. Step one, don't eat for a while. Step two, here's a bunch of science. Okay. There, I wrote a, I wrote a book and there's actually several really good books like that out there. I did not write that book. It wasn't necessary. This is how to actually do it so that you'll do it and how to do it without fear, without pain, without hunger, so that you don't have to push your way through a fast. 
And so it isn't like a form of torture and deprivation. And it includes things like what is a spiritual fast and what is the ideal intermittent fasting window for you? What's different for women and men? What supplements are okay during a fast? So this is the, the, the really usable from 10 plus years of fasting and teaching millions of people how to do it. Oh, that's so interesting. So I'm actually really interested to hear what you've learned, uh, what's new and what's going on with that. So fast this way. I'm excited to dig into that. So we're going to come back and talk about fast this way. And, but in the meantime, if you, for everybody listening and watching right now, I want to know what you've learned in this episode. If you would tag Dave, tag me, take a screenshot and post it, I would be grateful. And we want to hear from you. We want to know your questions, your concerns, what's going on with you during COVID. Um, I loved the, the levels that you were talking about of spirituality and learning. Um, I thought that was amazing. So that's what I learned. I Thank you. Really cool. Um, so we are going to come back. And when we do, we're going to talk about fast this way. See you in a minute. I'm still here with our friend, Dave Asprey. We are talking about his new book, Fast This Way. And one thing I can always count on Dave to do is know what is current in science. So I'm really excited to hear what's what's going on. What has he learned and how, um, I know Dave, you said in the last episode, this is not just a book about science. So I wanna know what you've put in this book to make it practical and easy for people. Um, what are the surprising things about fasting that you're gonna teach us? Well, I'm going to teach you three different things you can actually do during a fast that involve putting calories in the body that allow you to stay in a fasted state so that you do not experience hunger or a drop in energy. Because it's really easy to be like, oh, I don't have kids. There's not a pandemic and I have all the money in the world. So I just sit here and I wake up every morning and I drink my green tea and I meditate for two hours. Then my trainer comes over and like, I'd like that life. I don't know. I'm kind of busy. That doesn't work for me. Um, and when I weighed 300 pounds, it really didn't work for me because I would get hypoglybitchy, right? Yeah. And like you're yelling at everyone and you're tired and you can't pay attention. And <laughs> Say that term again. <laughs> hypoglybitchy. That's what I am. Now I've just labeled it. <laughs> and it, it's almost, a, it, it's unkind to tell someone, oh, you're fat. You just need to exercise more and eat less. And I did that for years and it's torture and it does not work, which is why I did the whole Bulletproof diet. And people have lost a million pounds on the Bulletproof diet now without suffering. And with fasting, you tell someone who's overweight, oh, just you know, don't eat for a while. And they're like, I think I can do it, but I'm spending all of my time thinking about muffins. <laughs> in, in fact, I found a study, Tana, that I published in the book um, that shows that 15% or more of the average person's thoughts during the day are about what's for their next meal. Mm. And this is a form of anxiety, right? It, and if you think about this, fear gets the most attention. It's like 10 times more. But hunger, famine has killed every species. It's wired into even bacteria get stressed when they're hungry. Like we get stressed. So if that's five times more energy than it really deserves, no wonder it's hard to fast, right? Your brain's thinking about scary stuff and it's thinking about food all the time. And you have this much left to think about what you want to do and who you are and you know how to parent and all the things that, that we all do. So I thought, all right, what if instead of forcing our way through fasting, we actually hacked our way through fasting so that when you want to feel the, feel the feelings, feel the hunger and really push through it, you're doing it in a spiritual context when you've set aside time and energy to do that. But when you want the metabolic benefits, when you want to have, you want to lose weight, you want your brain to work, you want the focus of fasting, you can do that without the pain. And there were three, three hacks that emerge, but to do all this, even before I published my first blog posts on fasting 10 years ago and on intermittent fasting and using Bulletproof coffee and all that, I realized that I was afraid of being hungry because we're told if you don't eat six meals a day, you'll go into starvation mode, which is death, right? And it is a lie, but we still believe it. And your cells certainly want to eat all the time. They're wired to do that because they're just dumb little cells. They don't have your brain backing them. So it's like, what did I do? I said, there's that, oh, and I'm afraid of being alone. And I hadn't really picked that up until I started doing some personal growth work. 
So I hired a shaman to drop me in a cave in the desert for four days with no food and no people. So I could face my fear of being hungry and I could face my fear of humans and there was nothing I could do about it. And I'm like, if I lose my, you know what? Um, well, yeah. then no one's going to see me and I can yell inside the cave and it'll echo, but like, I'm just going to have to deal with this because that's what I want to do. And I tell that story throughout the arc of the book. So it's a very readable book and it's pretty personal. I'm like, this is what actually happened. And this is the dumb fears that ran through my head. Like, here's when my amygdala gets activated. You know, here's, you know, when I got this burst of energy I didn't expect. And knowing those fasting hacks, though, means you don't have to go through the suffering. It is unnecessary. It's mean. And the people who say you can only have water during a fast, they're doing that because that's what the mice did in studies because mice don't have espresso machines. Like they, they never looked... They never look for what works best. They just like, well, we'll give them water and see what happens. But there's there's no reason to be, I call them like hair shirt fasters. You know what a hair shirt is? No. So there's these weird sects of monks and they make shirts out of human hair because they're super itchy and scratchy. And then they like whip themselves on their back because oh, yeah. they're such bad people. They self-flagellate and wear hair shirts so they can suffer more. You don't have to approach fasting that way. And it's not okay to do that. It's unnecessary. And like, why, why suffer? Get the results without suffering and have enough energy to be you. I, I, I just, I fundamentally believe that. And, I, and that's what's in the book. Yeah, I, I actually tend to agree with you. If, if things are supposed to be really good for our biology, if they're really good for our physiology and our psychology and all of these other things, they, they shouldn't be that painful. It shouldn't be that hard. Um, so when you're talking about fasting, I mean, we know fasting is good for you. Daniel and I are huge fans of intermittent fasting because your brain cleans itself when you're yes. fasting. Your autophagy for your brain is just, it's, it's really, really good for your brain. But are you talking about intermittent fasting? Are you talking about long-term fasting? What kind of fasting are you talking about? I talk about both. And there's a really good argument for not always fasting the same way every day. And there's an even better argument for not always fasting. And I read about something called the fasting trap, which is suspiciously similar to the keto trap, which is suspiciously similar to the vegan trap. Mm -hmm. And here's how these traps work. They're based on human behavior. And it, I was a raw vegan for a long time uh, and it broke me and I had to create the Bulletproof diet to get better. <laughs> so it doesn't seem to work for people's brains. Sorry, you can get away with it when you're really young. You'll just pay for it when you're old. And the the thing that's happening within our bodies when we we do any of these practices okay let's say you go vegan well for about four to six weeks you're going to feel really really good and that's because you're changing the type of fat in your cell membranes for bad fats and then your body freaks out and it gives you more energy as your thyroid goes up and then you feel great and by the time six weeks happens i've lost some weight i felt really good i know the vegan diet works and then you start feeling like crap but it can't be the vegan diet because it works and you're in the habit of it so you're like maybe i should be more vegan i guess i won't have that honey because it was touched by a bee and you become like militant meanwhile your health is declining right and eventually you're like okay i'm done i'm just getting a burger and then you, you know the lights come back on and then like i'm gonna go keto right and you become a keto bro same thing i feel so good on keto if you have one more gram of carbs you're a bad person how dare you touch the honey right and then you're convinced in 6 weeks oh my god keto is the it's going to be great and then if you're a woman you actually hit the wall before a man and the same wall that you hit in fasting you're like oh wait i felt really good it can't be that I, you know i lost some weight but now i'm plateaued it's cuz i'm having 15 grams of carbs i'll have only 12 Right. And you start becoming a perfectionist and you're stuck and then your health starts to go down and your hair starts to fall out and you can't sleep anymore, just like you did when you were a vegan. And you're like, okay, that's it. I'll just eat some crap for a while. And then you feel better. And then you say, oh, let me start fasting. And then you do the same thing. If intermittent fasting is good, I'll go to one meal a day fasting. I'll just not even eat that. And then, oh, I'll just fast like three days a week. And eventually you hit the fasting wall, which is because some of it's good doesn't mean more of it's better. And I've seen this twice now in my life with vegan and keto where people go all in. And part of the problem here is, especially for women, you don't need to fast every morning. It probably won't work for you, but it might. And for men, you probably don't need to fast every morning. It might work for you. In fact, it probably will work for you, but it might not. And one of the biggest messages in the book is don't fast the same way every day. Don't over fast. And every now and then just have the pancakes for breakfast, but make sure they're gluten-free. And if you do that, it's going to work really well. And if you become militant, I'm telling you, step one for men and women is, oh, I don't sleep very well. I wonder what just happened. Huh, it can't be, it can't be this new fasting thing because it's so good for me. And then for men, they wake up without a kickstand. 
right? Mm-hmm. And women before that, they're like, weird, my cycle's all messed up. And then both men were like, oh, weird, my hair is getting thin. I wonder what's going on here. And it's predictable. And it's, it's like Goldilocks was right. Just right, not too much, not too little. That's the goal. And that's what's missing from a lot of the fasting literature. Just because it's good for you doesn't mean you should stop eating. <laughs> I could not agree with you more. You literally like described my life for 20 years. Like the Mine too. <laughs> those extremes just if something's good more has to be better and i'd hit that wall and it just it never worked so i couldn't agree with you more um so when you talk about fasting different ways uh, give us before we end this episode what is a way someone can get started should they start with intermittent fasting should they start with a three-day fast what should they do you should start with an intermittent fast and you should start with one of the three fasting hacks that i want to go through in the next episode because those are gonna make it a very gentle entry into fasting and you won't lose your ability to function like a lot of people do, especially if they have some weight to lose. Um, so this is how to gently go in. I love that, that is so perfect. Um, so I um, can't wait to hear your hacks because I I love when you said that mice don't have espresso machines. So I have a feeling- <laughs> There might be some coffee involved. <laughs> My whole day is all I can say with that. So um, please go to, for everybody listening, go to brainwarriorswaypodcast.com. We'd love to hear your thoughts on these episodes. Leave us a review if you would, and please take a screenshot, tag both Dave and I, and tell us what you've learned. Um, I'm I'm actually learning a lot. I love this. I love that you're validating my thoughts on when I was a vegan. My numbers were not good. They started out yeah. good and they crashed. Um, but I agree with you. I, I agree that when you do too much of anything and you don't balance it out, you're asking for So I'm looking forward to the next episode and hearing your hacks on fasting. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Dr. Daniel Amen. In the end of mental illness, I talk about, well, what if we reimagine mental health as brain health? And this one idea changes everything. Welcome back. I'm still here with Dave Asprey. We are going to talk about fasting hacks, but Dave, can you hold up the book for me really fast? I want to make sure everybody sees it. Excellent. So there it's Fast Way, Fast This Way by Dave Asprey. And where can they find it? You can find it anywhere you like to buy books, but if you send your receipt to fastthisway.com, there's a little upload form. I'll spend two weeks teaching you the things in the book, and I'm going to lead thousands of people through getting started in fasting. And if you're an experienced faster, it's still worth it. I'm going to teach you how to do a fast on a day when you don't feel like fasting. And the final two days, I will lead you through a spiritual fast where you actually decide, okay, I'm really going to feel the hunger, but I'm going to own it. And you're going to use it as a practice of awareness, which is super cool. And this is missing from the world of fasting today is that it can be spiritual. It doesn't have to be spiritual. And it's not just like you're a meat robot either. There's, there's a middle ground. No, that's so cool. And to have someone like Dave Asprey be your mentor and walk you through this process is that's that's worth its weight in gold right there. So I, I mean, I actually think I'm going to sign up for this. I would love to see you there. Yeah, no, that's really cool. But I want to hear about these hacks because okay. I'm still stuck on the mice don't have espresso machines. So talk to us about hacks. If you with. were to be a laboratory mouse and they were to say you can only have water in about two to four days, usually starting around day three, your body, it, you feel really bad for the first couple of days. You think about food all the time. And then you get less, less and cold. And then you say, okay, I'm going to switch over into fat burning mode and you get ketones. And those ketones work really well for the brain. As you've talked about the neurons in the brain like ketones more than they like blood sugar even. So this is why every spiritual tradition that I write about in the book, there's kind of a whole chapter on that. Um, they're like, you have to fast for some period of time because it brings clarity. Now that's really good, but normally, you know, two to four days of fasting in a cave, isn't that available for most of us, most of the time, including me. So you could fast and go to work and all that, but it's a little bit of a different thing. So what do we do to get that, that day three, day four experience where you stop caring about food and you have mental clarity? How do you get that on the first day you fast? And that means raising ketones in a safe and effective way. And there's three hacks that shut down hunger hormones and ketones is one of them. And here's how that works. There's a study from UC San Diego that shows that drinking two small cups of coffee or more specifically, the amount of caffeine contained in two small cups of coffee. So you could use caffeine pills if you don't like coffee or something, but that doubles ketone production oh. in the morning. So, so if you have an early dinner, which is much better than a late dinner, 
So you eat at six, you go to bed at 10, you've already fasted for four hours, you sleep for eight hours, you got 12 hours, you have a cup of coffee. Now you've amplified the ketones your body's wanting to make, right? And then you wait till lunch and you've just gone 18 hours without eating. And it really just felt like you skipped breakfast, even though you went a pretty good amount of time. Uh, for me, I'm about 24 hours into a fast right now, and I'm not even the slightest bit hungry. I'm just not caring about it uh, because I understand these hacks. So the first hack, black coffee. The second hack, go ahead. That's a really interesting point because um, I kind of have the opposite problem with a lot of people. I tend to forget to eat. I know it irritates people, but I, I'll be busy. I'm busy and I forget to eat, but I, I have I have bulletproof coffee for breakfast. So I actually uh -huh. I mean, I'll sit and have you know coffee. Um, I don't have a ton of it, but literally I'm full by the time I'm done. Is that why? I never really thought about that. Oh, I'm, that's part of it is the caffeine. It's funny because you just hit the second hack, which is bulletproof coffee. And there's some people that are like, you can't have bulletproof coffee. It has calories. I'm like, I'm not a mouse. And here's, here's, <laughs> here's what's going on. Okay. I wrote this in 2011 about protein fasting and how it triggers something called mTOR. Yeah. Um, Actually, it doesn't trigger, it suppresses something called mTOR, which is something that happens during a fast. So as long as you don't raise insulin and you don't eat any protein, you can have moderate amounts of the right fats during a fast and you still have autophagy, which is the cellular cleanup, the cellular cleanup in the brain. You can have mitophagy, which is in the mitochondria inside the cells, clean themselves up or just kill the weak ones and grow strong young ones. So when you do this right, and yes, I'm not... I'm, I'm not trying to sell bulletproof coffee. I've sold lots of bulletproof coffee. It won't change my life. If anyone listening does or doesn't drink bulletproof, it'll change theirs. So what you're doing is you're putting a little bit of butter. It doesn't have to be a lot. It doesn't have to be tablespoons. It can be if you need it to be to get through the day. And you put this C8 MCT oil, um, the stuff that I call brain octane. And there's other people who have copied it. There's various sources of, of MCT out there. Just make sure it's the C8, not the full spectrum MCT because that stuff doesn't work. And then you... Put it in there and you blend it. And it's vitally important that you blend it. And here's what I've never shared before, Tana. When I had the idea for Bulletproof Coffee, I was on the holiest mountain in the world at 18,000 feet drinking yak butter tea, which is a blend in a, in a land of no blenders. They would go to the work of blending this by hand. I'm like, why would you do that? Well, I funded research at the University of Washington on basic water biology. And they found out that when you blend droplets of butter fat and MCT oil in just water, especially warm water, and you've got to blend it for 20, 30 seconds, it changes the structure of the water to mimic the structure of water that's inside our cells. And this isn't one of those like woo-woo crystal water. This is, look, you can see it on the microscope. See that band of water that's different viscosity? And they found that the largest, it's called an exclusion zone they've ever seen, was based uh, around from what water does around droplets of butter fat. So when you do this, when you drink that during a fast, even with just like, like a quarter teaspoon in there, as long as you blend it a lot, you're changing the structure of the water. Otherwise, when you drink a glass of normal water, your body has to make body heat to transform the water, not just to heat it up, but to change it into usable water. Well, you're using a blender to do that for you. So then during the fast, you don't get the cold and chills and you can actually go to the trouble of doing the things inside your cells that your body wants to do during a fast. It just can't do. So that bulletproof coffee is really interesting during a fast because a very small amount of calories in there works really well. And the MCT oil raises ketones in a similar way to caffeine, but it does four times more. So caffeine doubles production and this gets you four times more. So there's two times four is eight. And here's why ketones matter. If you're a keto bro, you're like, yeah, I got my ketones up to six. I'm really big. This is on, you stick a little thing in your, in your finger to measure it. Well, the studies show that at levels slightly below 0.5, there's two hormones that matter greatly. One is called CCK, it's a Calvin Klein hormone, also known as cholecystokinin. And this is one that makes you feel full. And another hormone that makes you feel hungry is called ghrelin, which you guys have talked about before. Well, ghrelin makes you feel hungry. You get your ketones up to a little bit below 0.5, ghrelin drops. So the hunger hormone goes away and the fullness hormone goes up. And this is why you don't care about lunch when you have bulletproof coffee for breakfast. So as long as you don't put collagen or any other protein or any other fake sweetener, you can do monk fruit or stevia if you want, but no, you know, neutral sweet and other brain toxic things like that. Uh, if you do that, you drink the coffee and you you don't use any willpower throughout the day. Someone puts a muffin in front of you or a croissant or something you really like, and it's 10 in the morning, 
what do you what goes through your mind? Well, normally you'd want it, but honestly, I don't. I don't even wasn't even doing it for that reason. But I'm not hungry. Like I'm yeah. just satisfied. And so I I've been doing this. Also, I heard that answer this for me. So I feel super satisfied after I have coffee in the morning. I just I'm busy. I do it yeah. partially because I know that I won't be hungry and I've got a lot to do. So that's why I do it. Um, I do have to remind myself to eat later sometimes. If I know mm-hmm. I'm going to have a long day, I'm like, all right, I should have a little snack because I just I'm gonna I'm gonna forget. But but isn't it true that MCT oil um, is not as hard on the liver? It's like much easier to digest. It not- depends which MCT oil. The cheapest and most abundant MCT oil is called lauric acid. And some brands actually promote that it's in there. Lauric acid hits the liver just like corn oil or any other oil, and it has to be processed by the liver. The C8 MCT oil does not get digested in the liver, and it cannot be stored as fat in the body. It has to be burned as energy, and it will be burned before everything else. And That's- it is... Yeah, and it's a source of exogenous ketones, which means that it actually transforms into ketones in the body and in a way that I believe is much safer than ketone salts or ketone esters, although there are people who use those as well. Because I think I used to put coconut oil in my coffee, but then I, I read research that said that the C8 um, MCT oil actually doesn't, put, doesn't burden your liver. Yep, so that was probably something I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were trying to fast, though, you want to avoid that. Um, you want to avoid MCT or you want to avoid other fats? Avoid uh, fats that are burdening your liver. The whole Even if the fat gets burned in your liver, um, it doesn't activate any of the, the protease, any of the protein digestion things. And a third party tested hundreds of possible breakfasts and found the number one breakfast for not moving your insulin at all was Bulletproof Coffee. So oh. insulin shouldn't go up and no protein because protein changes mTOR and changes autophagy. So that, that's the hack, zero protein, zero carbs. And even if the liver does some fat digestion, you're still getting the autophagy benefits of a fast. It's a really neat hack because all the pain of fasting goes away. And if you're like me at 300 pounds, I couldn't make it to lunch without breakfast without yelling at everybody. And so these three things, well, that's two, two of the three hacks. There's one more. Do we have time to fit it in? Go ahead. Okay. The other hack, and this has never been written about in the world of fasting before, and it deserves to be. And it's prebiotic fiber. Mm -hmm. And prebiotic fiber cannot be digested by you. It will not raise your blood sugar. It goes into the body. And then the gut bacteria, they eat it. And they turn it into a short-chain fatty acid called butyric acid, which is ketogenic. There are many studies that show prebiotic fiber is satiated. So tomorrow, Tana, if you were to make your Bulletproof coffee, you've got the Bulletproof beans without the toxins that mess with you and cause cravings. Then you put in grass-fed butter, MCT oil, and you put a scoop or two of prebiotic fiber in. And you drink that, you'll care even less about food. And there's a neat thing that happens because when you fast, your gut bacteria gets stressed. They make a toxin called lipopolysaccharide that affects the brain. It makes you tired and inflamed. Well, when you have soluble fiber, they don't get stressed because they got their food. You just didn't get your food. So they don't make as much lipopolysaccharide and you feel better. So for people who have gut dysbiosis, you, you needed to feed the good guys anyway. Now you're like, what, this is great. I did this in the morning. The, there's no voice in my head telling me to eat the muffin because someone puts it on I'm like, I don't want that, I'm full. And, and it's so liberating because there's no willpower for your fast. You're feeding the good guys. You know, you're getting into ketosis. You're making the neurons happy. It, it's a seriously big deal. And you can do just black coffee. You can just fast on water, right? You can go without water for a whole day if you want to. It's called a dry fast. But you don't have to when you have like a life. Yeah, I don't. I don't like to suffer that much. <laughs> yeah. But I always add prebiotic fiber to my smoothie. I never thought about adding it to my coffee. It doesn't so have I- any flavor. At least most of them don't. The one that I put together yeah. mm-hmm. doesn't do that. I, does Daniel make one? Do you guys make one? A prebiotic fiber. So I'm going to try yours. It's, it's called Inner Fuel is the bulletproof one. And you know, there's three different types in there that are all studied. They all, they're mostly like plant saps. And it's very different than like a Metamucil or like a coarse fiber. This is stuff that gets fully digested by your gut bacteria, but not by you. That's amazing. I'm going to try that tomorrow on my coffee instead of in my yeah, This belongs in the world of fasting because it's better than what the mice could do. They just didn't have anything else to do. They had little wheels. They ran on those instead. Well, and we're all, I mean, we the studies show that almost every human on the planet is lacking in fiber unless they are intentionally focusing on yeah. adding fiber. I get about 40 grams of soluble fiber a day. The FDA recommends 20 and the people of the longest have between 40 and 60. Yeah, no, that's good. That's excellent. So once again, you can buy the book fast this way, pretty much anywhere where great books are sold. You, right? you can. 
And then if they go to fastthisway.com and they enter their receipt number, if they enter their- just, You can just post your receipt, however you got your receipt. We'll take a photo, you can forward your receipt from an online seller, what, whatever way you get it. Audible counts too. I read my whole Audible book. This is the best book I've ever read as a professional voice kind of thing. I, I was so impressed with how it came out, if I do say so myself. But I, I feel like I did a great job on the storytelling. So it, it's, just, it's, it's worth the time it takes to read it because there's stuff in it that is in no other fasting book, both the mindset, why we do what we do and the hacks and I some other things I just for women. It. Yeah. I, so that's awesome. But, but I'm really interested because if they enter, if they go to fastthisway.com and, and they show you that they purchased this book anywhere, you're going to spend two weeks with that. I am. There's going to be several live Q and A's. There's daily exercises. You know, there's a video every day where I actually teach this and we start out, okay, here's the easiest way. And then we go through different patterns of fasting, the pros and cons, and you're doing it in a group so you can share your experience with others in the private Facebook group for it. And I'm moderating it. My team is moderating it. We're answering questions for you and teaching what's in the book because I was a teacher at the University of California for five years. And I just realized I've always loved teaching. And one of the reasons I teach is to learn. And one of the reasons I write is to learn because you have to crystallize it. So when there's a book that I, I just have like an internal need to write, um, then I, I write it because I feel like it's different and it's of service, uh, but I've kind of written them and set them down. So I just go read the book, but no, it's like, maybe I'll teach you the book because it'll help people more. So I, I'm pretty excited about doing this. No, it's fantastic. And what I also love is that right now, um, I know you probably get a lot of this too, but with us, with the clinics, we have so many people writing in about how they feel out of control of their lives. COVID has just changed everything this year. They're depressed, they're stressed, they're anxious. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Our clinics are just slammed. Um, and we are trying to give them things they can do. It's like, if you, you turn that around, one thing I learned when I was just, you know, feeling so disempowered in my life is I learned to take responsibility, which is the ability to respond. And just, yeah. I learned one question, what's the opportunity in this situation? What can I do right now? And this is something you can do right now to take control of your health. You can take responsibility for your health. You've got the time. Mm -hmm. if, Dave Asprey, like helping you learn to do something really cool that's going to help your body and your brain, which by the way, this really does help your brain learning how to fast correctly. So I'd strongly recommend people do this during this time. Uh, I, I would too. And, and thanks for recommending it. Um, I'm not charging anything for this, like buy the book so you can learn. This is a lot of time for me and my team, but I, I just, I feel like it's made such a difference in my life. Uh, I look at where my brain was, look at where my body was, you know, angry, anxious all the time in 300 pounds. And I look at where I am now. And th there's two things that matter. And a lot of this was inspired by the work that you guys do. There's the amount of energy you put into all the voices in your head, the automatic negative thoughts, right? And then there's just the amount of energy you make. And I'm, okay, let me show you how to make the most energy possible. And that gives you so much energy. You can now get in charge of the voice in your head. As you turn those down, that energy returns to your pool of available energy too. So you turn off the fear voices, you turn off the hunger voices and you crank up the amount of raw energy you make. And you're like, what just happened? I have so much energy. I want to go do stuff, right? And, and that's resilience. And that's what everyone really wants. Well, and there's one thing I want to say about you and some of our other friends that you know we spend time with. And you know, I've always said, I want to be the least intelligent, the least accomplished, the least giving person in my community. <laughs> Because seriously, people are contagious, right? So if I can yeah. find people in my group that are purposeful and educated and always doing good things in the world, then that's going to rub off on me. And that's how I've always felt about that. And, yeah. you know, you're a super successful guy. We all know that. But the fact that you're still focusing on purposeful things, I think it's part of why you're doing so well, especially during the pandemic. Maybe I'm wrong, but I... Do you know how boring it is to just do a job to get paid? Yes, especially right now. <laughs> So, it's so boring. <laughs> you know, people are always surprised. I spend hours like actually answering questions because I love like it, it keeps my brain engaged doing something purposeful. And that's what you're doing. Yeah. And, and you've you certainly know about flow states. You guys have talked about them as well. One of the easiest ways to get into a flow state is to hop on a mountain bike and go 60 miles an hour downhill. Oh, wait, except you might die. And it's not that easy <laughs> to do that. So the easier way to get into a flow state is actually just to be of service to others. And there's science shows when you help other people that you'll actually go into a flow state. So, yeah, that's why it feels good, because yeah. we, we talked about 
fear. We talked about hunger and there's, you know, desire for love in the bedroom as well as the rest of your life. So these are all F words, you know, fear, food, uh, fertility. And then, um, <laughs> and then there's friend and like your cells will do this. This is why bacteria makes yogurt, why it makes kombucha. This is why you know, trees make a forest, deer make a herd. And this is why we're wired in our cells to be nice to each other and to support each other. It's just hard to do that if all your energy goes to the first two or three F words. Mm -hmm. And this is at the core of all my work. Turn up the energy you have and you have enough energy to teach yourself to be less afraid and less hungry and to put love in your life. And what's left is a desire to help other people. So we're supposed to be nice to each other. That's fantastic. I love it. So Fast This Way, um, go to fastthisway.com, get Dave Asprey as your coach. Um, I mean, I can't think of anything better to do at this time. We are going to come back in the next episode. I want, we have one left, but before we come back, I want people to um, tell us what you learned. I mean, I learned a ton in this episode. So tell us what you learned. If you would, you can also go to brainwarriorswaypodcast.com, leave us comments, questions. Um, we want to hear from you, leave us a review and um, post this. If you would tag someone, tag a friend and tag Dave and I, we would love to hear from you. Welcome back. We're on the final episode with Dave Asprey. Um, I'm having so much fun. We are talking about fasting. Who knew fasting could be so much fun? But um, Dave, I learned so much in the last episode about, you know, not just like how to fast, but these hacks that you have. So how to not make it so miserable. I just had a great time. But I have a couple questions. Um, I know it's different for men and women. I heard you mention that. And I, I have a question about what's different for women. Obviously, I'm concerned about that. But also um, you touched on supplements and I want you to dig into that a little bit because even I sometimes get a little confused about, can I take my supplements? Am I, is it going to make me sick if I'm not eating? You know, there's so many thoughts we have around all of that. Um, and you probably have a lot of other things that, you know, myths that people or questions that people encounter when they start a fast. So can you touch on those two and maybe anything else that you can think of to address? Yes. Most of the fasting research, when you go back in time, was done on young white dudes. And the reason for that is because that's who was in university. <laughs> right? So, you know, college freshmen are the cheapest guinea pigs you can get who are humans because they'll do anything for beer money. And that's why about three quarters of fasting literature was done on, on relatively young men. And then you're like, well, what does fasting do as you age? What does fasting do if you're a woman? So I looked at all the research and there's one chapter in the book that's, that's very specific to women and saying, all right, here's what we know. And one of the things is that women oftentimes doing intermittent fasting every day doesn't work. And by the way, exercise every single day, like intense exercise doesn't work either. Movement every day works. But if you're going to go hit it hard every day, because that's the habit you want to do, because it's easier to hit it hard every day, you will burn out, you'll overtrain, your sleep will go down, your hormones will get messed up. It's almost like another, so the exercise trap that matches the keto trap and the fasting trap and the vegan trap. You know, more isn't always better. It's the right dose. I used to so, again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've, I've spent an hour and a half a day in the gym six days a week for 18 months. And I still weigh 300 pounds at the end of that. So I'm like, oh, maybe that doesn't work. And what you'll find for women is that uh, if you're menstruating, your body's already under a pretty heavy load. Like it's building new tissue, right? That is probably not a time to fast. And it may work for you to fast then. I, there are a few women who report that. But for most of them, you know, have some protein and some fat in the morning. And you're going to feel better. And those are days to, to nurture yourself, not to create 
the stress of a fast. And fasting is what's called a hormetic stressor. It's one of those, if it doesn't kill me, makes me stronger things. So there are times when, you know what? This is not the day for that, right? Eat a clean diet that makes you feel good, but eat. And if you're going through perimenopause or if you're just going through stress, you know, it's okay to eat three meals a day, but eat meals that are so satisfying, you don't have any desire to snack afterwards. If you eat and you're hungry two hours later, you ate the wrong stuff or you didn't eat enough. And many times people are eating their trigger foods and things like that. But I just think it's really important for women, especially if you're first getting started, fast every other day. Like have breakfast sometimes, just have the right breakfast. So you're not going to go have, you know, a, a whatever, an egg McMuffin for breakfast if you don't fast. But if you do that, you're going to realize, oh, I can do this on the days when it feels right. And some days you're going to just, I'm going to do it 14 hours without food. And because that's what I wanted. And some days you can say, I'm going to do a 16 hour fast. And then when it's time for lunch, like, you know what? I'm feeling so good. I'm just going to wait till dinner there. I just did a 24 hour fast. Look at me, but you don't have to do it on a schedule. You don't have to do it every day. And it's better to not do it every day because women are more susceptible to the stress of fasting than men, Mm. especially I believe if you're in your fertile years or if you're in perimenopause. And there's a, a lot of good science and recommendations in the book around that. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And Lord knows we don't want women walking around more stressed during those times than they need to be. <laughs> exactly. And we don't want anyone more stressed, but men, it, it's similar, especially if there's a lot of weight to lose, but uh, men don't have a monthly cycle, right? So for us, it's like, you probably didn't get enough sleep or you overdid something the other night and today you're just, you're not in a good place. And if you're fasting to avoid eating toxins, maybe it's okay. But if you're just like, I, I'm going to have breakfast. And if I wake up, I'm like, oh, something isn't right. You know, I'll put 30 grams of collagen in my coffee there. I broke my fast. I got a lot of protein and fat in the morning and I'm okay. And it tastes great. It actually yeah. tastes really good to me. It totally tastes good. And it's still, it's the same amount of work. You know, you're going to blend your coffee anyway. So I, I'm kind of lazy in the morning. I don't want to go prepare breakfast. I used to go meal. When I used to go at, leave early in the morning to go to the gym. Mm-hmm. Babe, just, it's so satisfying and complete. Yeah. And then you're kind of bursting with energy from those MCTs. Yeah. Now, Let's talk about supplements, though. Um, this is an area that's hotly contested in the world of aggressive water-only fasters. You can't have supplements. And it's because it's complex. And the first thing I want to share is there's a section in the book called the Barfy Four. <laughs> and these are four things. If you take those during a fast, you are going to hate your life. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> now, the first one is B vitamins. Um, you are going to taste those all day and you might taste them twice uh, because they literally are really not something to take without food. And if you're saying, oh, I'm going to take my normal vitamins while I'm fasting, that one might not be advisable. Uh, the second one is multivitamins. Okay. And I mean, you guys have a very high quality multivitamin that well, you make. Yeah. Right. And when I'm fasting, I don't take that one either. Right. Right. Uh, just because your stomach isn't going to like it because it contains B vitamins and it contains another thing that's on the list, which is uh, minerals. Mm -hmm. And usually zinc can be okay on an empty stomach, but a multi-mineral or anything containing iron is really going to make you not feel good on an empty stomach. So then just skip that during the fast, have that when you're done with the fast, unless you're doing bulletproof coffee or if you're doing of the, the prebiotic fiber, because those are enough protection. You can take vitamins with that. Right. Okay. Yep. And then the final one is fish oil. Don't take that on an empty stomach. You're just not going to like what happens, right? Even if it's a super high quality fish oil, it's good for the brain in moderate amounts. You don't need to like drink a whole bottle of it. And uh, that also is like, wait till you eat. But if you're going to have bulletproof coffee, or you're going to have the soluble fiber, you probably will tolerate fish oil as well. So these are for when you're having black coffee or water or tea during a fast only, or water if you're one of the, the hair shirt fasters. Well, it's okay to be a water faster, but like you don't have to be a water faster to get the benefits. In fact, coffee is almost always better than water during a fast, except at night. Now, if those are the things you don't take, what should you take to get more benefits from a fast than you normally would? And one of my favorites there is something called proteolytic enzymes. Mm. Now, when you fast, your, your pancreas is like, oh, uh, I guess I don't have to make digestive enzymes. I can make other enzymes. 
And what enzymes do in the body is they allow chemical reactions to take place with much less energy than if we were doing physical chemistry reactions so that they make things very efficient. And you can take proteolytic enzymes, things like seropeptase and natokinase and other types of, of protein digesters. And when the body says, oh, I have no protein for them to digest in the gut, maybe I can use those to break down scar tissue, to break down unneeded proteins, waste proteins in the blood. And it's a, a very powerful thing to take during a fast. I take those every night anyway on an empty stomach, oh. but I take them when I fast in the morning too. Oh, that's so interesting. I did not know that. Yeah, you'll, you'll find over time massive changes, even scars that you've had for a long time. Like if someone's had a C-section or an, a car accident or something, those scars get softer because the body's like, I got nothing else to do with all this stuff. Let me break down stuff I don't need. And they oh. even break down autoimmune molecules that are in your, uh, in your body is really cool. Wow. That's so cool. And the other massively important, just massively important thing when you're fasting, probably the most important supplement that I write about in fast this way is to deal with another problem. When you fast, you generally lose fat and your body stores mold toxins called mycotoxins. It stores extra estrogen. It stores PCBs, environmental pollutants. It stores uh, heavy metals in your fat. And if you melt a lot of fat all at the same time, all of that toxin is going to go to your liver. Your liver can only oxidize so much of it, and then it gets recirculated and sometimes even put into the brain. Unless there was something present in your stomach that could just stick to those things as they get excreted. And it is one of the world's oldest, maybe the world's oldest supplement. It's called activated charcoal. Mm. And Activated charcoal sticks to every one of the types of toxins I just mentioned. And so as they're recirculating through the biliary system, through the bile in your liver, um, well, the activated charcoal is right there. They're electrically attracted to it. And then you poop the toxins out instead of experiencing brain fog. Mm. And the more you fast, the more you're losing weight rapidly, the more important it is to deal with the toxins so they don't go into your brain. So what I do is at some point during the day, away from any medications and away from enzymes, I will take my activated charcoal during a fast. And the side benefit of that is it sticks to this bad stuff that gut bacteria make called LPS or lipopolysaccharide we talked about in an earlier episode. And this stuff makes the brain inflamed and it makes you hungry and it makes you angry and gives you cravings. It's a toxin from stress bacteria. Activated charcoal sticks to that toxin so you don't have to experience it. So you wanna have a super awesome fast, you start out the morning with the most energy possible, do your bulletproof coffee, put in your prebiotic fiber, drink that, wait a little while, have some activated charcoal. And you're like, I am so golden today. This is the best day I've had in a long time. I don't care about food. I'm not distracted. I have super clarity in my brain. And it's a very different experience than I had a glass of water this morning. Like it'll be a different day, but you're still going to have the ability to lose weight. You're still going to burn fat. You're still going to get autophagy. You're just going to like your life better. That's so interesting. That was so helpful about the supplements. Like that's really, really helpful. I did a lot of research on this and there's a handful of actually more than half, probably a dozen other supplements that you can take during a fast. And I just rank them like, this is worth taking. This is not worth taking. You can take this, but you might not absorb as much. Uh, we talk about vitamin D, vitamin A, vitamin K2, and all sorts of other things. So it's, it's complex, but it's not that hard to understand. And I really worked hard to lay it out in a way that was, uh, that was accessible for people. In, and so in the you book. went on all of those in the book? Each one of them. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So fast this way. Um, it just sounds like it's just loaded with information. I can't wait to actually read it. I think I'm going to sign up for your course. I think that just sounds awesome. I mean, I've learned so much in this time and I pride myself on staying on top of stuff. So this is really, really, um, very thorough. Thank you. Yeah, no, this is cool. So fast this way, you can buy it anywhere books are sold. And if you go to fastthisway.com, you get to have Dave Asprey as your coach and his team for a couple of weeks. So um, highly recommend that. Also, please um, go to the Brain Warriors Way podcast.com and tell us what you've learned. Leave it in the comment section. Would love to hear from you. Leave us a review, question, comment. And if you would tag a friend, take a screenshot, tag a friend, tag Dave, tag me, and um, give us your best questions, your best concerns, and anything you've learned. We'd love to hear from you. So Dave, any parting comments before we go about COVID, um, about what's going on with you, about fasting? Yes, there is a part of a chapter in Fast This Way where there's great research out there about 
when to eat and when to fast, depending on what kind of infection you have. And I don't want to give away all the secrets in there because it's a little bit more complex than this, but studies show that if you're dealing with a virus, you should eat and you should eat some carbs, but not sugar. And I go into all the details about why and where and how to tell which is which. And if you have a bacterial infection, the rules are different. Uh, So there's good research there and fasting can be used to change the time you go to sleep. It can can be used to change the time you wake up. It can be used during an illness. And I go through all that. And this is what's missing from the don't eat for a while. And here's all the reasons to do it. The nuances are here and they're very powerful just when you know what to do. I love that. That's fantastic. Um, So you can take control of your health. You can be proactive. You can take responsibility for where you're at. Do something positive during this crazy time. Um, fast this way. And we're so grateful to you, Dave, as always, you've been a good friend. You are just a great colleague and so purposeful and so helpful. Dana, thank you. I so appreciate your work. I appreciate Daniel's work. You guys really have changed my life and I would not have graduated from business school without your work. And I certainly wouldn't be doing all my bulletproof stuff. I'd probably be uh, homeless. So thank you. And the world is a better place because of you. If you're enjoying the Brain Warriors Way podcast, please don't forget to subscribe so you'll always know when there's a new episode. And while you're at it, feel free to give us a review or five-star rating as that helps others find the podcast. If you're interested in coming to Amon Clinics, use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amonclinics.com. For more information, give us a call at 855 978-1363.